Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to the live stream Sabbath message here at the Far Western Church. We're so blessed to have you today. Uh, those of you who are in your homes and those of you who, are, who were invited uh, to be um, in this segment of the first Sabbath message we have live streaming here at the Far Western Church. I would like to greet all of you coming from the leadership uh, of the Far Western Church. Um, if you are new to our group, this church is composed of 35 different countries, and we're so happy that you can be part of it. It's like a mini um, United Nations here uh, at the Far Western Church. I'd like to begin with the prayer as we open the word of God, um, let's bow our heads as we pray. Loving Father, we come before you this beautiful Sabbath, thanking you for all of your blessings to us. In the past few days, rapid changes happened in our local places, in our state, in our country and all over the world. With all of this, Lord, we know that you are a faithful God and you take care of your people. As we open your words to find hope, to establish what you have promised to us, may we find peace in the midst of the storm that we're facing. And may your word became, become a light in our path. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. In the past few days, uh, we are so blessed to have a group of people who have volunteered to make this happen. So I would like to thank uh, Jim, Lori, Derek, Will Frank, and the rest of those who were here uh, with Lee. Um, setting up our um, streaming for, for this Sabbath. As we always do as a church, I would like to continue asking this question. How is your walk with Jesus this week? Has he been more sweeter as the days go by? Has he been more closer? It, was your walk with Jesus more deeper this week? There's so many things that happen in a world that has created us a lot of different circumstances in which it affects the reality of our walk. There are so many different things that have affected that for me personally. But I know that God is faithful and because of the reality of his presence in our lives, we can go deeper. And this is our word for this year. This, this word has been very strong for us. We want to have a deeper walk with Jesus through a deeper study of his word. We want to have a deeper walk with Jesus through um, relationships and connections. And that is going to change because... We cannot meet anymore as a church, but let's continue to keep connected. Um, so instead of shake hands and hugs, instead of seeing each other, now this goes to phone calls and Facebook messages and Instagram and tweets. And I think we should do it. We should continue to connect with each other in social media and in different ways. So we want a deeper connection with each other. That's why the word is deeper for us this year. We want a deeper um, discipleship experience that we are not just members of a certain organization or church, but we are disciples. We are not even followers, but we are disciples of Jesus and we need to have a deeper passion for ministry and mission 
things have changed in the ministry that we are going to do here as a church now because of the things that are happening around us. So these are the things that uh, we focused and we have started this year. So how's your reading of the Word of God? I think it was so enjoyable to find that now we have more time to really go and bathe into God's Word. Especially that these times we, we cannot go out anymore as much as we can and go to our um, work or school. Let's use this time to have a deeper uh, walk with Jesus in all of those things that I mentioned. So this, the world around us has been so crazy starting last year. Actually, in the past three or four years, it's been crazier and crazier. We got a fires in California and then this huge fire in Australia. We have... Um, we had the earthquakes in different places in our world. Turkey, um, Puerto Rico, and, and some other places. And then we have the volcano eruption in the Philippines and then several other places in the globe. Uh, this led to a lot of chaos and panic. And then just recently we have the tornado that killed... Uh, a good number of people in Tennessee. So if, if we can pray that God will um, hold these families that have been affected by all these calamities, but then we are walking in uncertain times now because of the coronavirus. Um, I don't need to explain that, or all of you are probably well aware of the updates of, of this disease. And it has caused so many families broken um, and by this disease. Um, but God has actually brought a movement, you and me, to connect with those who are still, you know, out there with no hope, and even to connect with our, our with our own church family. Uh, sometimes we think that church is where we go, but actually church is who we are and how we impact the lives of those around us. So as we start with this message, I just want to let you know that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Well, there is fear around us, and I'm afraid, God did not give us the spirit of fear. You see, there are 500 words about fear in the King James Version in the Bible. Um, and there are also 365 fear not in Scripture. As if one day for the whole year, God is giving us this message of hope. Not to fear. Fear is crippling. When fear seizes us, our ability to think naturally or rationally evaporates. Life becomes overwhelming. And the promises of God are actually thrown out in the window. When Moses sent the spies to Canaan to gather information for the people of Israel, there was fear because they, were, they saw giants and they were so afraid. They were afraid of the giants and they forgot about God. When uh, the people of Israel heard about 11 of the spies that went out, they were so afraid and they forgot about God. You see, fear paralyzes action. And so God is actually giving us the hope that he has in his word in the Bible. And let's discover, uh, not 365, 
but a few of the strongest fear, um, fear knots of God that will fight off the fear that we have. Number one, we need to know that we should not fear because God is present. God's presence is with us. That's why we should not fear. Psalm chapter 46 reminds us that God is our refuge and strength. He is a very present help in trouble. God's presence is an antidote for fear. Number two, we need to remember that God's truth is an antidote for fear. You know, the Word of God reminds us that we should not fear. And Jesus had that in John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So God's truth about who he is and his presence is an antidote for fear. Number three that we need to understand and we need to put in our hearts that God's grace takes away our fear. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 gives us this beautiful reminder while Paul was struggling with his trial. Paul the apostle was wrestling with the pain and the sufferings that he was going through. And he was asking God to take away the thorn in the flesh. You know what Jesus told Paul? He said, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, with Paul, we can boast that even in our fear, even in the weak times that we have because of our situation, God's power, God's grace is made perfect in us. So, number one, we got God's presence. Number two, we got God's truth. And number three, we got God's grace. And then number four, we got God's sovereignty. God is sovereign. He knows what is happening. He is in control. He still sits on the throne. And Daniel said in, in Daniel chapter 4 verse 35 Daniel said all the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing and he God does what he wants with the armies of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth there is no one who can block his hand or say to him what have you done Daniel was very, very aware that God is sovereign. He saw that. He lived through several kingdoms, actually two, the Babylonians, the Medes, and the Persians. Um, he lived to two different kingdoms, and he saw it, that God is sovereign. The next one is, that we should not fear because God hears us. I love this verse. In Psalm chapter 40, verse 1, and it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. 
Psalm chapter 40, verse 1. And then we have God's trustworthiness. Even in the times that we are afraid, God reminds us in Psalm chapter 56, verse 3, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in God. Finally, finally, God has a big plan for us. We should not be afraid because God has a big picture plan. I love what an inspired writer has written. In the questions of life that we have, even with the things that we are experiencing at the moment. And she wrote this beautifully, and she says, in the future life, everything will be made plain. We shall see that our seemingly unanswered prayers and disappointed hopes have been among our greatest blessings. So, I don't know, I don't have answers to your questions about the things that are happening maybe within your own family, maybe within your own life, maybe with what is happening in our world with this coronavirus. But I am certain with full assurance that God will make it plain. So Romans 8.28 reminds us and in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. To those who are called according to His purpose. But look, this particular verse is not just the blessing that it is. If we don't look in the previous passage before it. So Romans 8.28 says, We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Yeah? Even with coronavirus? Mm. Even with accidents that happened or things like that? Why would Paul give us this picture? You know, because there is a text previous to, to this. And it says, Paul knew already very, very clearly. In verse 18, it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy compared to to the glory that is going to be revealed in us. That's the reason why we have hope. That's the reason why there is Romans 8.28. Because whatever happens now is nothing compared to the plan that God has for us. We may not see the good in our situations at this time, but we can trust God can trust him that even in these difficult times he has a plan and he will fulfill his plan so throughout scriptures we are encouraged to put our trust in God the promise of his grace the promise that he hears us the promise that he is sovereign the promise that he is trustworthy and most of all, the promise of His presence. So as I close, I remember David in Psalm 23. And in many of the, as a chaplain, many of the patients and the people I have visited, this is their favorite, even those people who are in their deathbeds. What, what do you want me? What is your favorite scripture? And they said, Psalm 23. Because Psalm 23 reminds us that even though I walk through the valley 
of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So let us continue to hold on to God's antidote for fear and his promise to fear not. I pray that you will find hope, you will find confidence in our God who is faithful, who is a covenant-keeping God, and who will continue to be with his people even unto the end. Let us pray. Loving Father, thank you for your promises that gave us hope. Thank you that your presence will never leave us nor forsake us. I pray for our church. I pray for every single family, every person hearing this message today. May they find hope and comfort in you because you have promised to never, never leave us nor forsake us. We live with this hope and finally we live with the greatest hope that we have when you will come in the clouds of heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.